This is part one of three of my top 60 ungraded comics that I purchased in 2018. If you want to see what they are, just stick around. Go, go subscribe to We Love Comics. We love, and we do, we love comics. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. What is up, ladies and gentlemen of the comic book community? My name is Chris, and this is my channel, We Love Comics. And today is part one of a three-part series of my top 60 books. And there we go with my cat already. He heard my voice. Top 60 books that were ungraded um, that I purchased in the year 2018. This isn't all the books I got in 2018. I've, there were a lot more I could have put on this list, but I didn't want to make it a 20-part series with every single book, so I picked the best of the best. So this video will be issues 60 through uh, 41, and then as the series goes on, the comics will get better and better. So hopefully you'll see a comic that you haven't seen on a video or haven't seen before, and you might be interested in picking it up and adding your to your collection. I always make sure I add the prices so you guys have a general idea of what to expect price-wise. And um, also, I'm going to be doing a contest, a giveaway. Now, I'm not going to give the full details of it at this point, but the one thing I will recommend is you will have to be a subscriber for one. You will have to like the videos, and you will have to watch all three of these videos. And I won't explain why, but those who do not watch the entire videos will not get all of the clues necessary to be able to enter the contest. And the contest is going to be all of the posters I have remaining, the comic book posters, I will mail to you. So it's between about six and ten posters, and I'll be mailing a comic or two. And um, I'll mail it anywhere in the world, so it, it's not limited to people just in the United States. So, if you want to enter, um, stay tuned for details. Watch the entire video. Make sure you pay attention to certain things. And I'll give you the details somewhere in the third video. And um, that should be coming out in the next couple of days. So, enjoy part one. And here we go. And also, before I start, also wait until the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout-out. If you want one, all you have to do is be a subscriber. And uh, if you want to ask for one, I have no problem with that. So this one was one that I used some of my eBay bucks on, so I paid a total of zero for this book. But I have several copies of this. This is Submariner issue number one. Uh, this is the first of his uh, own series back in, I think, 1968, I believe. Uh, definitely a book I've been telling people to acquire. I probably have about at least four or five copies of this book. Um, hard to get in higher grade because a lot of the colors tend to fade. But this book nowadays is probably going to be about $85 and up, depending, of course, on the quality of the grade. This is probably about a 5.0 to a 6.0 range. And um, I bought a, most of them a couple of years ago. But uh, for free, with an eBay Bucks, you can't go wrong. And I have videos about the eBay Bucks if you don't know what they are. You do have to be uh, living in the United States or the territories. I also believe Canada as well. All right, so number 59. This is a book, another book that I would highly recommend. Now, most people say it's just an Eternals book. It's issue number two, which is the first appearance of the Celestials, which isn't bad itself. But this one is the 30 cent variant so this is definitely a key book to get and one that you know provided the movies do well uh this could be a very sought after book because this is the rarer variant because most the normal cover has 25 cents so this book is a little bit on the expensive side now but you could still get deals i got it early enough i paid 83 dollars, and i believe that's either 10 or 20 cents so this is the first Celestials and Adjiki. I don't know how it's pronounced, but uh, we'll see if that's any relevance in the movies when they come out. Definitely high grade. I will be getting that book eventually graded. All right. This is another book I bought just when it came out, like a month after. Well, actually, about a week after it came out. So I got these relatively cheap. I bought two of them. So I'm not going to show both. But this is definitely a book I was very happy to pick up. This is Thanos, issue number 13. This is the first print. I also have one of the variants where it just basically shows his head. And I have another one of them signed. 
So I didn't want to show them all, but I paid. I got this. Sometimes it's all about timing. Uh, this is another book that's going to be graded eventually. I paid $19.04 for this book. I see it on average now for over $75 and up. So definitely that is a train that is passed for most. Still could be a, a book to acquire if you can get it for a decent price. All right. This is a major Golden Age key book, but it is a coverless book. And I'm one of those people, I don't care, because to me, the comic is still a comic, whether it has a cover or not. And, of course, obviously I would love a cover, but I would not be able to afford this book with the cover. And maybe I'll find somebody selling the cover someday. So I added this to my collection. I have about four different coverless books. I have Amazing Spider-Man number one. I have Fantastic Four issue number one. Um, there is one other. If you guys remember, let me know. But uh, I don't mind getting these. Uh, Superman number two. And I got them at unbelievably amazing prices. And this is no exception to that rule. But uh, this is number Batman number 59, which is the first appearance of Deathstroke from the Golden Age. So absolutely major key issue, as you could see, Bob Kane art. And who knows, maybe one day, because there are people on eBay that exclusively will sell just covers. So uh, if I pick that up for another one or two hundred, I definitely got a great deal because this book, even though it's coverless, first dead shot from 1950, Joker appearance, I only spent $150 on this book. So I cannot complain about that. Um, you know, some people won't get coverless books, and that's perfectly fine. Obviously, I'm not here to tell you how to collect. I can only go based on what I do, and I didn't have a problem with it one bit. All right. Next up, this is number 56. Uh, this is a book that caused a lot of um, controversy this year. I was very happy to pick this up when most people weren't, wasn't even aware of it. It's definitely cooled down. But this is Batman Damned issue number one. Uh, this is the uncorrected proof, the advanced reader copy. You can see because it's got the different wording here. So this is a rarer one. Now, I don't know what the print run was because originally people were saying this was one per store. It's even less than that for this book. So the regular prints, you know, they've definitely gone down in price. But this one, um, I, I didn't want to buy it uh, when I saw it for the cover price of $7.99. But as soon as I heard what was going on with this book, I knew it would go rise in value because of that quote-unquote controversy. But I didn't want to get the one everybody else is going to get. So I saw they had this uncorrected proof, and it comes with a letter um, it's obvious in the back of this book. I have extra back, backing boards to protect it. But um, I paid a total of $72.89 for this proof issue. I bought it the day it came out. So as soon as I heard the news, I went on eBay and I snatched this up. This was going for a couple of thousand at one point. So it's definitely gone down since then. But the one press store variant or whatever, the, the uncorrected proof is definitely still a hot book to get. What, what happens long term, we'll, we'll have to see. All right, next up, this is number 55 on the list. I have several copies of this. As a matter of fact, I have two copies that I bought the day they came out for $1. But uh, anytime I get a good deal on these, I will get it. I think I have about five copies of this book. But it's Uncanny X-Men issue number 266, which is the first full gambit. You know, that is a little controversial because... Um, where they say his um, cameo is, he's in more than one panel, and he does speak in them. So, you know, it's one of those things that people have just accepted that this is what they consider the full appearance. But this is one of the controversial ones. But, and again, you, you just basically go with what people agree with. But um, this book usually goes for about $100 on average, ungraded. Um, this one needs a little pressing on the back, but that's no big deal to me. I want it for $54.50, so not bad price for this, even with the fact that it needs a pressing. All right, next up, this is another book. Eventually, I will get graded. This is number 54 on the list. Um, I've been, I love this cover. It is such a beautiful cover. This is another one I will be getting graded. This is the San Diego Comic-Con comic issue number two from 1993 which is what they consider the first real full appearance of Hellboy. Now, this is in black and white, so the Next Men book, I think it's Next Men 21, is the first color version. But this came out before that. 
So there is a story. I did check it out. There's a small little story with Hellboy in this. There is an Italian book where they just show him on the cover, but they do not consider that his first real appearance. So this is the one to get if you can get it. Definitely a very expensive book, but I got this with a deal. It even came with a... Um, do I have... Yes, I have it right here. They also included this Spawn toy. And this is the first series and everything. So, um, actually, no, that comes with another book. So I apologize. But you got to see that anyway. But I, I know this came with something else, another comic. I forget. But I paid $178 for this book. Um, definitely looks like a 9.6 to 9.8. Um, eventually, I'll send this to CGC to get graded. But it's funny. Every time I get enough money to send books to CGC, I end up finding another comic book that I spend the money on. So that's why you haven't seen a CGC haul from me in a very long time. Because like I said, every time I end up getting enough money to say, okay, I have enough to get a, like 20 comics to be sent, all of a sudden I go on eBay and I see another great deal that I can't pass up on. So I'm sure some of you have had that same situation happen, but eventually I'll get it done. All right, so next up, number 53. Uh, I have a couple of different... Um, copies of this those of you who watch my channel know that i like to get multiple copies so this way if i ever need to sell one which i haven't sold any in a very long time and um or maybe do a trade because i have enough key issues now that i want to do a trade with somebody for an amazing fantasy 15 um, i don't have the money to buy one as of now you know straight out but i definitely have some valuable comics that if you add them together uh could maybe entice somebody to trade a lower amazing fantasy 15 so we'll see. But this is Daredevil issue number two, which is the second appearance of Daredevil in his banana suit. It is also the second appearance of Electro. It does have a uh, Fantastic Four cameo appearance. Um, so definitely a great book. Very inexpensive. And definitely if you cannot afford Daredevil number one, this is the next best thing. You could get this one pretty uh, reasonable. Uh, this is probably about a 4.0 to a 5.0 range, somewhere in there, so not a bad grade. I only paid $52.05 for this book. So I think that's a really good price for that book, and definitely one to consider if you get the um, chance to get it. All right, number 52. Uh, this is another one you can get at decent prices if you look for it. Um, I had two of these growing up as a kid, but they both got stolen, but now this is probably my fourth or fifth copy. This, of course, is the all-new, all-different X-Men, number 94. This is the first issue where the newer um, team that consists of Colossal, Nightcrawler, uh, Storm, and uh, Wolverine, who was in on the cover, started, you know, their first appearance, of course, is Giant Size X-Men, number one. But this one is where they basically start it, because I think from the 80s to the 90s, somewhere in that area, uh, could be the seven mid seventies to the night to ninety three. They were all reprints. I mean, X Men was going under, and I'm surprised they didn't cancel it. Uh, but this saved the franchise and turned it into what they are today. So um, definitely an iconic book to get. It has like a little burn mark here. It looks like somebody was smoking a cigarette near it. Missing a little piece here, a little color break there. But overall, I would say this is probably a four point five to a five point oh range. Um, not a bad book to get to add to your collection. I only spent $86.55 for that book. Cannot complain. All right, next up. Definitely love this cover. Always wanted to get this. Had to wait for a decent price. Had to pass up many an auction to get it. This is number 51 on the list, which is Vampirella, issue number one. This is her first appearance. Um, it does have a couple of ticks along the spine. This came out in, like I think, 1969 or 1970. Um, love the painted art, looks beautiful, definitely an oversized, like a magazine size kind of comic, 50 cents back in the day, I wish I paid 50 cents for it, but this is definitely a book to add to your collection if you, if you, uh, especially if you like horror stuff, or just first appearances. I paid a total of 270, um, no, that, that's not right. What did I pay? Because that's from another thing, because it says second print. So that, that was from a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Um, ooh, I don't remember what I paid for it. Hmm, I'm sorry about that. I know it was about $100, somewhere around there. Uh, for some reason, I didn't write that one down on this one. I guess when I switched the backing board, 
Um, I forgot to exchange the price, so I apologize. But I know I paid about $100 for this book. Definitely did not spend $275. That's from um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, the second print. So there we go. All right, so this is the one that uh, this is issue number. This is the 50th on the list. This is the one that came with the toy. Uh, This is Malibu Sun, uh, issue 13, which you cannot say is the first appearance of Spawn because this is not a comic book. It's kind of like a program kind of thing, but it's one of the first times you see Spawn on a cover. It does predate Spawn number one, and it's tied with another comic. Um, Again, it's not a real comic book, but it's like an advertisement. But this is a desirable book. You know, some people may not like it, and that's perfectly fine. Other people love this book because it does predate Spawn number one. Um, Beautiful cover. Obviously, this is the cover you see on one of the Spawn issues. Uh, In really good condition, I would say, again, 9.6 to 9.8. And this, like I said, included earlier, it included the Spawn toy. So that makes more sense, having the Spawn toy with the Spawn comic. So with that all combined... I paid a total of $85 for this book. I've seen it go as high as about $150 to $250. And um, depending on when the uh, first trailer for the movie comes out, um, this book is definitely going to be rising in value. So you still have a little potential. But wait for a deal, obviously. Don't just buy it just to buy it. Uh, This is another one of those. This is number 49. This slipped under the radar. I'm very happy I picked this out, considering that the scrolls will be in the uh, Captain Marvel movie, and who knows where they go beyond that. Uh, this is Fantastic Four, issue number 18, which is the first appearance of the Super Scroll. Um, I also have issue number two, which is the first appearance ever of the scrolls. But this is the next best thing if you can't afford that book, because that book has tremendously risen in value. Um, Again, this is another one of those I picked up on the radar. I don't remember exactly when I bought it last year, but I know it was during like either a holiday or an event. And um, I think I was the only bidder. I paid only $67 for this book. That is a steal, especially nowadays. I mean, this is no 9.8 by any means. This is probably a 3.5 to a 4.5 range does have a little bit of a stain, has some color breaking ticks, little color breaks right here. But as you can see, the cover presents pretty darn well. So for that price, I'd buy that every time. All right, next up, we have on the list, that is issue, well, number 48 on the list. This is a high grade, very rare for me, if you watch my channel, Uh, of Amazing Spider-Man number 17. I have several copies of this book, but this is by far the nicest one I have. I would say this is easily anywhere from a 6.0 to a 7.5 range. Uh, This is the second appearance of Green Goblin, but the first appearance of his glider, because if you look at Amazing Spider-Man 14, which is his first um, appearance, he kind of rides what I call a a, uh, magical vacuum cleaner. So this is the first time he uses his, you know... Now infamous glider, so definitely still a major key issue. Plus the fact, you know, the first appearance is so expensive, most people are going to gravitate and be able to afford this. And this one's starting to get out of reach. Um, When they announce Green Goblin in a Spider-Man movie, obviously they're not going to do that right away. But when they do, because I know it's a matter of when, not if, these books are going to get even more expensive. So grab these when you can. Uh, Again, very high-grade book, paid $263.00 and 65 cents so um beautiful looking book even the corners are nice and pointy so that one absolutely will be getting graded at some point all right next on the list is another high grade book this is 47 on the list i showed this one fairly recently absolutely love this cover i would not be shocked and no pun intended but I would not be shocked if this book came out as between an 8.5 and a 9.2. But this is Amazing Spider-Man number 46, which is the first appearance of the Shocker. The colors on this are absolutely stunning, especially right here where you see the head of Spider-Man. And even Orgon agrees. He's very happy about this book. Maybe it's one of his favorites. How shocking. But, I mean, this book is absolutely gorgeous. The pages on the inside, because I always check the back and everything, they are pure white. And this book looks like it's never been opened 
because the pages are crisp. Um, this is absolutely a book I will be getting graded, and I cannot wait for this one to um, come back. But I paid $183.40, which is not bad for a book that potentially is going to be that high in grade. And again, Oregon agrees. And for some reason, he loves being in front of this camera. Uh, I don't understand it. He's such a ham. I guess he's seen many cat videos on YouTube. He must watch it when I'm off at work or something. But uh, for those of you who love it, I'm trying to make sure it's not too much because I know the other day I made a video and he was just a little too much. So let's continue with the list. This is number 46. This was a book I always wanted to get, but it was really expensive. So I passed on many an opportunity to get this book. And I always tell people, you know, don't buy a book just the first one you see. Wait for deals, which means you have to have patience. So sometimes you have to wait months or even years to get a book. But if you do it, you'll eventually have one come your way that will be worth your while. And that's what happened with this one. I passed up on many opportunities because I didn't want to overspend for the book. And, of course, this is... Uh, Batman 232, which is the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul, definitely a uh, very important villain in the Batman series. Um, this is definitely a mid-grade book, again, probably about a 4.5 to 5.5 range, a little bit missing in the corner, a couple of color breaks, but still presents really well. I only paid a total of $118. Now, it does have a split along the spine here. But hey, for that price, I'm not going to care. Because if I ever do get this graded, I don't know if I will. But if I do, one thing is I don't mind the damage on the side because you can't really see it when it's slabbed. So as long as the cover presents well, I'm perfectly fine with that. All right, so we have about five more books to go for part one. And thank you so much for watching. So if you're watching this far, um, tell me the name of the cat. That is um, appearing right here. Obviously, this isn't one of the other three. So um, I'm not going to tell you the name because I've said it before. Um, you do have to spell it right. So be very careful about that because that is the first part of, one of the first parts of the contest. So if you skipped uh, this video and only saw certain parts, you're going to miss a key, key issue part. So make sure you write this down. One of the questions for the contest is going to be what the name of the cat was in the video and we're at the 22 minute mark so write down you saw it at 22 minutes so don't post anything yet save it for when i talk about the entire contest so don't write that down in the contest in the comments yet just write it down and save it because that will be part of the contest so the next one on the list this is number 45 this is x-men number three uh, this is another book I wanted for a long time, but um, again, I didn't want to overpay for it, but this is the first appearance of The Blob. Again, lower grade book, probably about a 3.0 to a 4.0, but again, the cover still presents well. Not a major character, but who knows, with Marvel acquiring the X-Men, if they ever use him again, we'll see. But still, for an X-Men character, I can't complain, especially with the price. I only paid $53.65 for this book. That, to me, is a steal and definitely worth acquiring for such a low-numbered uh, X-Men and a first appearance of a character that people will know. All right, next up, I got two of these, but I'm only going to show one of them. Uh, this is number 44 on the list. Definitely a book that I've wanted, but again, very expensive at times, but you always wait for a deal. You will find one. This is The Flash, number 139 which is the first appearance of Reverse Flash. Definitely a key issue and a main villain in the Flash series. One to get if you could pick it up. Another kind of mid-grade book, about a 4.0 to a 5.0 range. A couple little color breaks here and there, but again, as you can see the pattern with me, as long as the cover presents well, I don't mind. Every now and then there's an exception to that rule, especially if it's a high grade that I couldn't afford otherwise. But I like to try and get the covers and the colors to present very well. All right, so I paid only $105.50 for this book. Uh, tends to go for about 150 up, even in lower grades. So wait for a deal. Because you guys know me, I love the deals. All right, number 43, another book I've wanted for a long time. Passed up many opportunities to get it because it was just too expensive or too low of a grade. Even I have my standards with lower grades when it comes to certain books. But this is Detective Comics number 298, which is the first Silver Age appearance of Clayface. Basically, they call him the modern version of Clayface at this point. 
Um, another expensive book, um, hard to get in higher grade because especially with these deeper purple covers, they tend to show a lot of color breaks. It's got the typical color breaks along the spine, just means it's been loved in red. But again, the cover presents well. There is a little bit of a tear right here. So I would, there is some pencil writing here with a date. All right, so the video ended at 30 minutes. So I'm not sure how much it got. So I just want to say again, this is Detective Comics 298, which is the first modern appearance of Clayface, the first Silver Age appearance. They basically say it's the modern age. But around a 3.5 grade to a 4.5 grade, somewhere around there. Um, passed up on many opportunities to buy this book because uh, I was waiting for a deal because this one can get pretty expensive. I only got it for $131.25. Definitely a great book to add to your collection. All right, so we only got two more left for this particular series. Part two will be in the next day or two, and then we will have part three. And then I will give all the rules of the contest if you want to enter. Of course, you do have to be a subscriber, number one. So please make sure you hit the, sub the subscribe button if you haven't. All right. This one will definitely be getting graded. I got an absolute steal with this book. Uh, this was another one of the books that I used some of my eBay bucks. I didn't use it completely on this one. But for the price I paid, I mean, this could get a 0 0.3 and uh, I would make out... This is, I have several copies of this, but this is Amazing Spider-Man number 121, which is the quote-unquote death of a certain character, Gwen Stacy. I mean, spoiler alert, if you don't know that at this point, then, you know, I can't help you. But this is definitely a higher grade book. I would probably say a 5.5 to a 6.5. does have some wrinkling here. There is a little bit of a rounding of the corner. But as you could see, the colors definitely pop out in this book. One or two little minor color breaks along here. Um, looks pretty darn good. John Romita cover, John Romita Sr. Loved his covers. Looks amazing. No pun intended, but uh, paid a total of $17.14 for that book. So after the eBay bucks, um, but how do you go wrong for under $20? I mean, that's like something you couldn't even pay for in the 80s. All right, so last but not least, this is number 41. So this will be the last one of this particular video. And please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you appreciate this stuff. Share it if you think some of these comics are things that your friends would like to know about. Um, hopefully my inspirational kind of videos on, you know, trying to get people to be more encouraged and wait for deals can help inspire other people to get discounts. So sharing it absolutely helps. And um, don't forget to leave comments at the end. All right, so this one, I got two of these, but again, I'm only going to show one. This is definitely a great book to acquire. Very happy to get this. Did not have this one as a child. But this is Amazing Spider-Man number 20, which is the first appearance of Scorpion. Um, again, a beautiful cover. It's got some rounded corners, but there's a little piece missing here. Maybe some uh, piece of tape got stuck to it at some point from somebody, and they tore it a little bit. I don't know. But the staples are intact. Spine looks great. It would be a much higher grade if it wasn't for that. So I think that probably lowers it down to like a 5.5 to a 6.0 range. Uh, the inside of the book is beautiful. It's flat. doesn't even need a pressing, but this is definitely a key book to get. Um, where they go with the Scorpion and the um, Amazing Spider-Man movies, who knows? I'm sure if they did a Sinister Six, he would be part of it. So I don't think he's a one-and-done character. They may use him for another movie or two. But still, even if they don't use him in movies anymore, it's still an iconic cover and an iconic Spider-Man villain. Definitely worth picking up. So um, the price I paid for this was $114.25. The other one, I think I spent about $125. So again, really good prices for these. And that's what it's all about is finding the good deals. Don't just buy the first one that you see. Don't be afraid to ask people for deals. The worst they can do is say no or ignore you. And let's put it this way. If you email 99, 100 people and 99 say no or ignore you, and one person finally responds and gives you an absolutely amazing discount on a comic that you really wanted, you're not going to care about the 99 times you failed. You're going to love the one time you succeeded. So the one time is going to outweigh the 99. So keep at it. Be friendly. Be patient. Bide your time and keep more money in your pocket instead of giving it to other people. Don't just buy the first thing that you see and basing it on emotion. I tell that to people all the time. I mean, it's your right to do whatever you want with your money, but why not save it? Because whether you spend money 
or save money on books that I recommend, it doesn't affect me at all. I'm just trying to help you so you can help yourself. And if you appreciate that kind of stuff, again, thumbs up always helps. Sharing, favoring, things like that, subscribing. And uh, don't forget to wait to the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout out. Give them a shout out as well. Let them know that you saw this at the end. So part two of the contest right now, write this down, is to make sure you mention who is today's surprise subscriber shout out. So again, you don't have to put that about the contest part in the comment section. Write it down on a piece of paper. So there are now two parts already in the contest that you're aware of if you watch till the end. So it's going to pay to do that because there'll be other hints coming out in the other videos. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And don't forget, it's not you. It's not I. It's We Love Comics. Part 2 should be out in another day or two. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, just click right here. If you want to join our cashback program and get $10 off your first purchase of $25 or more, click here. And then if you aren't subscribed, we'd love you to join by clicking here.